So they made it through again. Stuart, you were involved the last time they yep. got to this stage. What do you think? Have they got a better chance this time? Albeit it's uh, the Europa League Conference semi-final, but it doesn't matter. It's still a European tournament. Yeah, I think I think they've got a better chance on a couple of fronts, really. A, the experience that Dave and the squad have, the vast majority of the squad, um, having been in this situation before. I think as well, it's not a stronger competition as the Europa League. We understand that. But for the club and for Dave, it, it's sort of underpinned uh, a very disappointing league campaign. There's no doubt about that. But I'm absolutely delighted that they've had a brilliant day at the stadium last night. And Dave will have one... He, he just wants to get his hands on this trophy. And when you look around the London Stadium about the achievements that the club have won, I think they've only won three three items of silverware. So, yeah. to actually... This is know, big. This is big. For but sure. You touched on it. Is West Ham's poor domestic form unfairly diminishing what they're doing in Europe? Um, I, I think you can almost look at both in isolation in many ways. Their the European campaign's been nothing short of magnificent. You know, they've won every game by one, which they've drawn, I think, something of that nature, which is quite incredible. Um, but there'll be a frustration there with Dave, the fact that they, they've not shown a level of consistency in their league form. Yeah. I mean, it is something else, Simon, to be honest. And you, you, I, I watched it this morning. I watched the highlights this morning. The noise inside the London Stadium. All of a sudden, Simon, playing at the London Stadium and uh, displeasure about that amongst some West Ham fans, I think goes out the window. They're winning. They're winning in Europe. It's looking good. All of a sudden, yeah, West Ham's a good place to be. Well, in recent weeks, yeah. I mean, certainly you get the performance and the recovery against Arsenal. Uh, and the upturn in performance in the Premier League because at one particular point there was a trade-off that looked like was going to happen that potentially they might be successful in Europe at the consequence of losing their Premier League status. And with all due respect to David, winning a European title, and I know the West Ham fans, a lot of West Ham fans disagree with me, to, to some extent would have been scant consolation to me as an owner to get relegated from the Premier League. Now... <coughs> West Ham fans corrected me repeatedly about this notion that it would be more important to stay in the Premier League. Well, OK, they're going to do both now. And I'm pleased because I like David. And I want David to, to be given the respect that I think he's due for the job that he's done at West Ham. Yeah. Um, and I think that this does give him a, a degree of... Um, uh, a, not so much a pass, but a slide away from what has ultimately been an underperforming season in the Premier League now they may well they, they're, they're likely to perhaps win the games that they've got coming up against the various sides and may even finish as high as 13th but that wouldn't be the list that they wanted to have been on i.e. in the bottom third of the table but they're now in the semi-finals this, this is not you know on paper you think well West Ham playing against AZ Alkamar you know who are they and what are they they're fourth in the Eredivisie who have they played in this tournament they've beaten Valencia but Valencia are in the bottom three of La Liga They've beaten uh, Atalanta, which people quite like that side because they're an attacking side. West Ham have gone through this tournament. It's not the, not the most gifted sides, but notwithstanding that, they have an opportunity now. But this game, I mean, I, when, I, when, I, when I saw the, the result against Genk, because I was watching the Man United game, I thought, that's great for Moisey. I looked at the draw, I thought, well, that's a gimme. And then I looked more into it and think, well, actually, it's not a gimme at all. Yeah, this yeah. is a, actually a difficult game. No, and what David point. won't want to have happen is still defeat from the jaws of victory in a semi-final by losing this. Uh, you make a great point. This is a tough game. I think yeah. this is in the balance. It, it, on betting scenarios, I think both teams are, are very evenly balanced. Uh, West Ham being at home first uh, probably might just give the ascendancy to AZ. Uh, That's what I was going to say. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was going to yeah. say. Sure, I want to ask you one before we hit the break. Thereafter, we'll talk about Manchester United. Oh boy, there's plenty to talk about. Not the good sort. How big a transitional summer ahead is it for West Ham if they're having to rebuild with maybe a new manager, because David might depart, and find a replacement for their best player, Declan? Uh, the biggest blow, I, I'm not sure there's a massive rebuild there. Bear in mind, you know, last summer, seven players come in, seven players that, that we've looked at and thought, you know what, we, we think they're going to improve our squad. You, you're bringing a German left uh, right back through the door, you're bringing a Brazilian number 10 and whatever. I think those players will be better next year. I really do. I think they've had a really tough transitional period coming into this country I think they'll be better so I don't think there's massive wholesale changes yeah. but Declan not being there if that is the case if that is the case oh, it will be, Stuart, it's going to be a massive blow for the club it'll be the case surely he, he's carried the club 
with his performances and, and what he stands for and, and whatever, both club and country, I think, of, of recent years. Yeah, I think it'll be time up for Declan there. Simon, very briefly, and I know we're pushing it a bit, but I will push it. You know, last night, I see the goal that Declan scored. I mean, it's it's breathtakingly good. No wonder Sullivan wants 120 million plus add-ons. Yeah, but there was observations earlier on in the season, and Graham Souness wrote an article about Declan Rice about where he where his best position was and what a central midfielder should be able to do. And Declan Rice did has done things during the course of the season that you'd like to see him do more of. Um, and when he does more of it, you wonder why he's not doing enough of it. Sure. Because clearly he's a top quality player. But when yeah. we get into the territory of him being worth 120 million quid, he's worth 120 million pounds. If someone is prepared to pay that, and if someone isn't prepared to pay that, and Declan wants to move, then West Ham are going to be in a slightly difficult position. Because if the player decides he wants to go and he's done his bit for West Ham and he wants to go, and there isn't a market that's prepared to pay 120 million quid, and I'm not sure there's going to be. Um, it provides a conundrum for West Ham because I, I don't think he's a hundred and twenty million pound player. But, but then again, th- but you didn't think Jack was a hundred million, I, and I still don't. I think I think Jack Grealish is a very talented player playing in an absolutely outstanding side, and you've got to be exceptionally, exceptionally poor not to look good playing for Man City. Is Declan worth one hundred and twenty mil? Uh, I'm probably of the agreement. No, I don't think he is for one hundred and twenty million. I think you want a goal scorer to come through your doors that's going to guarantee, guarantee you thirty goals, goals yeah. fifteen, okay. twenty goals a year. That okay. will be what I say. Jim White and Simon Jordan, Monday to Friday mornings from ten on AM on DAB via the Talksport app and on your smart speaker. Talksport.